Hi everybody, I want to show you a clip of Douglas Murray talking about the Middle East conflict because I think he makes a really important point and I'll explain why in a moment. Muslims do not love other Muslims. They have no love for them. They have no love for the Palestinian peoples. None. If they had any, the Jordanians would have taken in the West Bank Palestinians, the Egyptians would have taken in the, 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 the territory they used to run, the Gaza, and own the Gaza, and they would have taken in the Palestinians from the Gaza. Why have the Egyptians made sure that not one uh, Palestinian is allowed to leave Gaza? Why, why do they make sure that their border wall is tough as anything? What do they mind? One thing, Jews living. Jews living and Jews winning. It hits them deep in their soul, in their psyche. It's an ancient, ancient hatred perhaps the most ancient among the monotheisms, and uh, the deepest and the ugliest, the nastiest, and the one that has been least addressed. And we've imported it. Muslims... I really think this is such an important point to remember, and I'll tell you why. Because I think we often can feel a bit uh, pressured, or maybe some can feel a bit intimidated when they feel the emotional arguments, the rage that's that's put at Israel's doorstep. You baby killers, you colonialists, you thieves, you terrible, terrible people. And Douglas is making the point that why do these people not seem to be so enraged and so upset about the many, many more people killed in so many other conflicts, forget the rest of the world, just the Middle East. And then, of course, why do they not lodge their complaints with Egypt and say, why aren't you opening the, the border to let Gazans out and to, to 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 live there. Why aren't other, are other Arab countries doing the same and accepting refugees? No, nope. it's just Israel's the bad guys. So it's so important to remember that. So important to remember that this is not really sensitivity and concern, or at least at the very least, it's misguided at best. But at worst, it's just because of a hatred of Jews. And part of why. Israel is such a thorn in the backside of um, the Islamists and uh, people that, let's say, um, in those sorts of camps and those sort of circles have an issue with Israel, is because, think about it, if your view is that your religion has superseded Judaism and other monotheistic faiths, and this is the one that shall conquer the world, how do you make sense of the fact that the Jewish people who were wandering the earth for 2,000 years have now, as God promised in his original covenant with the Jews, he's returned them to their homeland and the land has bloomed and been restored? So how do you make sense of that? That's not how history is meant to, pro to progress, according to the Islamist mindset. And so, of course, therefore, they think, well, Israel must be eliminated. Israel must be an evil. So... What really has to happen is that people, you basically have two camps. There's the camp that says that the whole Palestinian cause is based on a justified grievance. And then there's other people who say this is actually an ideological issue. It's based on a religious view of the world and it's based on a belief that there, this religion has to supersede, and has, to, has to dominate the world. And Israel's re-establishment doesn't really fit with that narrative. And it's ideological. And that's what drives it. And based on your view of which one it is, that will shape everything else. If you think it's based on justified grievance, then you'll talk about two-state solution. You'll talk about, oh, well, Israel's being a bit too harsh and you, can't, you need to see the other side and two sides to every story. Or if you see the latter, that it's actually ideology, then you realize, actually, these people just need to have a reform. They need to grow up. They need to mature. And they need to acknowledge the truth. They need to come to realize that God never forsook the Jewish people. And that he keeps his he keeps his word. If he says, "I have an everlasting covenant with you to be your God, and to create and to give you a land as, as an eternal eternal inheritance," I think it's great news for every single one of us on this earth to know that God keeps his word. He doesn't rip up his contracts, and and create new testaments. So, I think that's uh, that's what Douglas is touching on here, and that's something that we really need to remember and appreciate. Don't cave to the mob, to the rage, because really, it's totally misplaced. I'm Ollie Annisfeld and you're watching JTV.